Hi everyone, welcome back to our Hong Kong Watchbox Collectors Lounge. Uh, my name is Josh Rolovitz, one of the sales team here, and I have with me Terence Liu, one of our head traders, his first time on the show. Terence, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here, guys. I've watched a lot of your videos, so it's fun to be part of one of them for once. I guess the first order of business is a quick wrist check. Terence, what are you uh, wearing today? Uh, I'm wearing my GMT Pepsi uh, 16710. Uh, this is a great piece, one of my first proper watches. Uh, I'm kind of new to the watch business, so I, su I searched for a long time to find a watch that really fit what I wanted. I wanted a bit of color, I didn't want anything too heavy, too modern. Um, decided between this and the Kermit, and I finally found a really good deal on this uh, Coke piece at Pepsi. So yeah, just happy to have it and, and love it. Just enjoy wearing it every day. It's definitely a future uh, classic. Yeah, that's right. Good piece. How about you, Josh? What are you wearing today? Just a traditional uh, two-tone date, just 36. It's a recently discontinued reference. Um, just love the watch, very easy to wear, great size, versatile, um, kind of no-nonsense uh, type of piece. So, nice, very cool. Yeah, easy. So I think um, one of the topics is always, you know, we're a very global company, so we try to compare, you know, what watches are hot in the U.S. versus Hong Kong or, you know, our Geneva or South Africa offices. So for example, we want to focus on some of the, the watches that were asked for the most here in the Hong Kong uh, market. And so I think Terrence and I have kind of compiled a nice collection of some of these pieces. We just walk you through really briefly on what we're seeing as most desirable, most, uh, you know, the hardest to get pieces on the market here. Terrence. Yep, so starting over here is just the typicals in the next generation of my watch is the uh, Rolex GMT2 Batman. Uh, this piece has been around for a few years, but it continues to be one of the hottest pieces uh, in town. Really hard to get hold of and is selling for way over retail in, in the secondary market. This is one of those pieces that, you know, for some reason, um, you know, you try to go buy a brand new at the local AD or somewhere of that nature, and there's, you know, several year waiting list, so it's just impossible to find. Um, we are fortunate to have one here along with these other great pieces. That's right, and in retail, the difference is only $500 US uh, versus the all black bezel, but for some reason, the blue, just the blue semicircle at the bottom here has just been adding a lot of interest, a lot of value to the watch. It is a great look. Yeah, yeah it is, very nice. Mm. Yeah, in addition to Match of the Batman, we do have the the new uh, 126710, the, the new stainless steel Pepsi with the Jubilee bracelet. Awesome watch, really well designed. The new clasp uh, system as well on the back of that bracelet. Really, really a lovely watch. We don't see too many of them here yet. Uh, so definitely a great watch to, um, to always have them on hand. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So besides Rolex, um, another popular brand here is AP. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in AP, the, uh, uh, the Royal Oak pieces. We have some larger pieces with uh, with complications. The reference number is two six three two zero ST. Yeah, yeah. Um, or the simple time and date pieces, uh, which a lot of people are finding as good alternatives for really really hard to get pieces out in the market these days. Um, the AP boutique here in Hong Kong is sold out of these all the time. Uh, they keep telling us that they basically have don't have any of these pieces uh, available for sale. So it's nice to see that some are still available on the on the pre on on the secondary market here. Right, and what's cool about AP, uh, much like Rolex, in fact, is that in addition to interest in their contemporary pieces, there's a lot of interest in their, you know, contemporary, their classic pieces, you know, more vintage uh, items. So, for example, we were fortunate enough to find a 14790ST with the Eve Klein blue dial. The watch is a full set, and the dial is just, in person, is just so striking. It's blue, it's almost purple, you know, violet in some light. It's a really, really uh, yeah, that's right. special, special I mean, AP specializes in blue dials, but this one is, is really iridescent. Um, the, the color really pops out and, and really sets it apart from the, your usual APs and, and their dials. And my favorite AP of all the whole entire collection in, in Hong Kong right now is the brand new, the 15202 IP. This is the, the, the traditional ultra thin we've all come to love, the Jumbo, 39 millimeters automatic. This one is the IP variation, so titanium case with platinum, bezel, center links, and crown, and a special gradient dial as well. It's really, really sharp. Actually the first one that we've received in this reference. So again, can't stress how, how rare this watch is. In Hong Kong, we've heard from the boutique, it's a five plus year waiting list uh, to get this piece, and just, it, it's a wow watch. So if you compare it with uh, other um, uh, APs, you can see that the, um, the interlinks are shiny because they're, they're platinum, as is the bezel, and so AP, uh, their decision was to use titanium to offset the additional weight that the, the platinum adds to the watch. Uh, so it's an interesting combination. It's it's really is a beautiful watch, and it really does. It's a nice next step evolution for the for the AP bracelet.
What's an Omega have over here? So Omega Speedmaster is another very popular piece uh, in Hong Kong and, and globally as well. Um, we do have a, a very big range of, of uh, Speedmasters from the older pieces up to the limited edition Snoopies and, and Tintins. This one is a piece that we, I found quite interesting because it's uh, one of the moon watches and on a leather strap. So it's kind of going a little bit retro with, a, with the usual sized uh, a case, but with the skinny, skinny feeling straps, which was the feeling that the, the, space, the space walkers had on their wrist was, uh, was that the strap looked very, very skinny compared to the, to the watch. So this uh, is a nice uh, uh, panda dial with the blue uh, subdials and a nice blue alligator strap here. Yeah, that's the CK2998 variant, which is, again, when the watch came out, it was one of those really hard to get pieces. The colors are awesome, the proportions are just right, easy to wear, versatile again. It's an all around, uh, you know, really well done piece by Omega. That's right. And you have a longer there? Yeah, another uh, piece we don't talk about as often is a uh, Logman Sun. Um, in house German, engineering German design, really, really classic. This is a 38.5 millimeter uh, Logman One. This one's really unique in that it's a 30-piece limited edition for the German Hausmann Boutique. Comes with a solid case back like much of the Pata counterparts do as well. The dial is like a really dark uh, uh, grayish black color with contrasting lighter gray subdials. On deployment buckle, again with that extra case back, that watch is really, really well done. Very, very beautiful. It's one, to be honest, until this point I've not seen or heard of before. Really, really lovely piece. And then just going back to the Rolexes, so the sports models with the ceramic bezels are the hot thing right now, but we at Watchbox have always been a big fan of, of the steel Daytonas, uh, be they Zenith ones from before or the, or the final version of the steel bezel. Um, this is a beautiful white dial piece that's in pristine condition. Um, we feel these are slightly undervalued in the ceramic craze right now because uh, in the future these, this will be the last version of the steel bezel uh, ceramic, uh, steel bezel Daytona that they make. So it's really something that's that's going to be very different in style and look to the to the watches that come out in the future. What is uh, the chef here? Tell us what they've used. So this um, our Watchbox app, uh, which I hope all of you have out there, and adding your watches to the Watchbox. We've added a new function, uh, which is the the virtual rea uh, augmented reality try on a watch. So you can get hold of one of these bands uh, from the Watchbox, either our boutique in Hong Kong, or we can send one out to you. You put on this sample uh, watch that has a special image on there that reacts to the app. So Josh has got the app open. So once you have the, the strap on your wrist, you go into the app, you go into uh, try on a watch, and you can choose from a, a whole list of different watches out there. There are some current pieces, some future, to be, uh, future unreleased pieces. Uh, you find one that you think will, uh, will be interesting. And then you just uh, aim the camera onto it. And this is really cool because it allows you know those of us who may not be near uh, an authorized dealer to try on these watches. I mean, get an idea for what the watch is going to look like on your wrist in terms of size. And it's really, really um, an exciting new technology that we're developing. Take a picture, save it for later, and send it to us here at Watchbox so we can do get that watch for you. So you can try on different pieces, pieces that may be out of range, uh, your price range, just to have a play, or pieces that are just not available in your area. Like Josh said, you can take a picture of that as it goes into your camera roll and you can share it with your friends and uh, just have some fun with that. Cool. I think that's all we have for you guys this week. We do appreciate it. Terrence, thank you again. Hopefully first of many. Yep, it's been fun. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.